<laughs> we should be writing. <laughs> we should be writing. We should be writing. probably definitely going to screw up the intro. I have a feeling that's just going to be a regular thing. Whew. All right. Welcome back to We Should Be Writing. This is the, I don't know what episode this is going to be because I don't know what order we're going to, re- I already fucked it up. So hi everybody. Welcome back to We Should Be Writing. I am Nick Bodick, aka Nick Bodick on everything. I am here with Travis Brown, aka Grand Theft Motto, and the amazing Dathan Auerbach, a.k.a. 1000 Vultures. How are we doing, gentlemen? I'm good. We're solid. We're solid. Um, I think that that messing up the intro every time can be like your trademark thing. Like some people have catchphrases (laughs) and you just fuck up the intro every time. (laughs) You you just bungle it straight out the gate. And then if you fuck up later in the episode, it won't matter as much because you already hit the ground running. Got it out of the way. Yeah, exactly. Like, you, know, you know what to expect now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, usually on this show, we just kind of, I mean, it revolves a lot around horror and writing, obviously. But uh, because we have you today, uh, we want to talk about you today. Uh, Dathan Auerbach, if you don't know, which I don't know how that's possible, he is one of No Sleep's elite writers. He is the scribe of the story uh i think on no sleep it's best no it's always best known as pen pal which he turned into a novel and as well as bad man i don't know if you're writing anything else right now i'll ask about that later but um i suppose i should start by asking man how did uh where did pen pal come from uh i mean it was uh so like in the early days of uh of no sleep right it was uh just a just a whole like um, a whole bunch, like a litany of like really like they're all amateur writers, all stories that like had no connection to anything else, uh, just like really interesting, kind of like fresh, weird, like horror ranging anywhere from some creepy thing that happened to someone someday to like more elaborate, like spooky, like semi paranormal stuff. Uh, and I thought it was really interesting, uh, and especially with the whole approach of like. Uh, everyone pretending that it was real uh, and at the, in the beginning of no sleep um, that had a little more like a lot more credence to it I think because like it was it was a newer subreddit so like it was easier to play along um, and I read like a bunch of those stories uh, just killing time on on my phone or computer or whatever um, and, it, and it because there was a really low barrier of entry because it was all amateur writers just having fun uh, I thought well, I can, I can have fun. Like I can write something. Uh, and so I did. Uh, and, um, that was it. That was, that was the whole like genesis of everything. Everything I've done since then was just like for kicks just to see, see how it would go. Sure. Where did the idea for, okay. And this is, I know this is a dumb question, but like, I mean, you're a writer, obviously pen pal is all fiction correct yeah okay I, I mean, yeah i mean I'm, i you know i yeah I, I i've never had a friend who's been buried alive there's <laughs> nuggets of truth in there right like, probably the, the least interesting uh parts you should have just lied to just look straight at the camera and been like 100 percent true <laughs> all, of it. all right edit it and i'll say that later and then you could just like you know i don't know put it in twice it on there. <laughs> it'll be just another voice it'll be like yeah no everything's 100 percent true yeah dude terrible <laughs> thing doesn't match up with his lips <laughs> blur my blur my mouth and then put it in there that's um not to distract but fun fact i think pen pal was the second story i read on no sleep and one of the major things that got me to write the first being left right game so i was going okay. through the the classics and the three that stood out to me the most were left right game pen pal and then completely different she sold happiness and glass jars uh those were the the big hits and then i've read some of the other ones later like spire and baraska uh, but you never forget your first three in this case your first three i think my first uh well I, okay i don't remember i don't remember i think the first one i read was about like uh i don't remember much about it but it was about like a mass killer uh it, it was it wasn't like Strained credulity a little bit, um, but the first one that really like stuck in my brain was uh, Stinson Beach, uh, which was like it, it did it did it, it was a really short story and it didn't like amount to anything more than like 
just a bunch of like eerie interactions that happened like throughout the story of like people talking to this dude saying like uh you know uh, there's something i need to show you or something like come to stinson beach i have something to show you or whatever and it was just kind of this like refrain in the story that just like stuck in my head like a song or something uh, and i thought that was neat for like for like an internet forum to be able to do something like that and that's I've... So that's super cool. I, I don't know if that kind of thing would fly these days on No Sleep because I'm not sure if it sounds like it's a complete horror story that fits all the rules, but it sounds like it's one of those unique fiction experiences that does need some kind of home. So I'm glad that at least with early No Sleep, they were able to to sort of get into that mix, get into that weirdness. Yeah, it was, I mean, early No Sleep was just, it was the Wild West. I mean, there were like, <laughs> oh, there yeah. were no rules, like... I mean, because well, and, and it made sense. Like the bigger the com- the bigger a community becomes, like the more people you have participating, and so I, probably you need some guidelines in place to stop people from going off the rails or doing things that are outside the spirit of the subreddit. But in the beginning, like it was, it was like uh, kind of community rule and like uh, like community ruled in the sense that people would just download stuff that they didn't like that like didn't fit. I remember one story like someone. Someone got like murdered in the end of the story, like murdered in the end of their own story, which made no sense at all. Like, it would do, like, they weren't even saying that they were like a ghost in the machine, like typing from like inside the notepad or something. Like, it just made absolutely no sense. Uh, and they got, they got like, you know, uh, demolished for it because like it doesn't fit. Um, but then, yeah, like the more community blows up, like you got to start adding rules, but then it changes the character of the place, I think. Yeah, that like, I think about, I mean, like you said, the old no sleep was like you said, the wild west. And like, I just think about what like stories that came out back then that wouldn't be allowed now. And that's like, that's just kind of depressing because you wouldn't get stories like, uh, like the stairs in the woods, the search and rescue stories. Those would absolutely not be allowed today, which sucks. Cause those are some of my favorite stories ever. Um, as for my first no sleep, uh, my first no sleep experience pen pal is definitely in it was one of the first three stories that i read on no sleep see i know that yeah, for sure con- that that should be like the tutorial is before you <laughs> access the rest of no sleep you have to read three of them and one's pen pal. <laughs> for sure and uh you know it's crazy like i have never spoken to dathan auerbach in any real capacity before today but uh my most well-known story started off as a ripoff of pen pal a hundred percent dude and like I, i've turned it into a novel now that i'm shopping around yeah. like i owe you quite a bit actually dude like um you should have just called it pen pals with an S on yeah. it. right yeah. like predators aliens pen pals there you go there you go pencil <laughs> buddies there you go <laughs> done that's the alternate name for this podcast pencil buddies, pencil buddies. <laughs> hey, that could be your other thing change the name of the podcast every week every that time yep yeah. yeah um but yeah, dude, I, I remember reading it. I remember absolutely thinking it was a true story because, I mean, this is before I even like really knew how No Sleep worked. Like this was like first or second day that I found No Sleep. So I, there's a learning curve there to figure out how everything works and how you're supposed to conduct yourself in the comments and all that. But um, yeah, man, like that story was like, it, I mean, it's still brought up in every what's the scariest story you've read on no sleep it's 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 everybody's favorite um and now i'm blanking on questions that i wanted to ask you i'm like starstruck right now dude we'll we'll come up with some more but that's a fun point you brought up because getting into no sleep again i didn't uh realize at first the the whole you know it being in, in character that everything's kfab and that uh you commit so hard to things being real and Pen Pal is one of the ones that is actually just shockingly believable in that it is freaky to a degree, but it's so it could happen. And then you look at the news and you're just like, there's so many awful, insane things in the world. Like, is this is this one real? And eventually you get in on it and it loses some of its magic. But that first time encountering it, and I think that it was even better. I think I was probably reading No Sleep Around 2015 was my first peak. And then I, I maybe looked at one or two and I came back around 2017, didn't start writing until 2018. 
But I'm imagining that even prior to that, like 2010 when it launched, it must have been so fantastic just stumbling on that and just being like, how much of this is genuine? Yeah. Um, maybe there were actual stories that people slipped in there that you know aren't fiction uh, that we don't know about. But it's so cool. And it's neat where Nick brings it up that there's an OOC post pretty much every month from a new person. Mm -hmm. Like, what are the no sleep stories I should read? Pen pal is pretty much always on there. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, like the the I mean, I had people because uh, I, I had the same uh, the same kind of reaction, like because it's it, I I found no sleep linked from some other like it was like an ask Reddit thread and it was like what's uh, you know what's the scariest thing that ever happened to you and somebody like dropped a link to no sleep after one of the stories because like it's you know it's full of other scary stories that have happened to people so i was under the same kind of you know uh illusion when i started reading no sleep like it, it wasn't immediately clear to me that they were stories like that they were fiction because uh, it, it was all most of the stories then were like pretty unpolished like there was you wouldn't have dialogue and you wouldn't have it would just be like a diary entry of something that mm. happened to somebody. And I remember like, and I tried to like, I mean, to your points about the believability of pen pal. I mean, that was something that like, I I needed it to be believable so that it would fit in the subreddit, which kind of determined the, the, the trajectory of the story and the things that I was able to do. Uh, and I had, it, I had at least like two, like one, I had at least one person, two, a couple of people reached out to me asking like if I needed to talk and if I needed help. Uh, but like one person said, uh, no one would lie on the internet. So I believe them, uh, that mm. they were like, I don't know, a clinical psychologist specializing in like childhood trauma. And if I ever needed to, it was like, it was like a, a thousand word, like thesis on, you know, how, if I needed help, I could reach out to them and they would like, you know, they'd love to talk to me and whatever. And I, didn't respond to that because uh, you know that's, that's a little has taken the character like a little far. It's uh, really committing to the yeah. the KFAB. but it's funny too because with the people reaching out believing it, I know that uh, when No Sleep was in the news a few times, especially a couple of years ago, where these stories would kind of go viral and even news sites would pick them up. They get shared on Facebook and people would be like, "Look at this real thing." There was something about I, I think a small town in Arizona where. It was fiction, a no sleep story. And I remember seeing Walker. one article. Yeah. Uh, so that was wild is that how much it sort of infects like the actual mainstream uh, in a fun, spooky way. And I don't see it as much now. Now, whenever no sleeps in the news, it's like someone got a, a Netflix deal and the rest of us are just like, ah, how do I do it? Uh, but super happy for you, dude. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> and I say that without no one, at least a few of them who, who have gotten it, who are all wonderful people and it's completely deserved. Of course, every time there's the announcement, you're just like, where was that agent hiding? Like, how do I get him? But, yeah, well, um, I, I think that they, I mean, like when no sleep was blowing up, like that, I mean, that became a place I think for like, you know, scouts to look and mm -hmm. try to like, you know, snipe, you know, new IPs and whatever. Um, like when the, I think after it was clear that this was just kind of a repository for like amateur creative writing. Um, but like, yeah, it's, it's now you have, and that, that has, too has changed the, like the texture of the subreddit because yeah. like now people are sharpening their craft there, which I think is great. That's just a different experience. Like it's a different experience having someone, you know, offer up a completely amateur piece of fiction mm -hmm. versus somebody who's like, you know, trying to break in or trying to like do something like semi-professional. Get um, noticed. And even and under the level of, you know, being picked up by Netflix or Sony's or Hulu or whatever, there is a surprising amount of money in things like YouTube narrations and mm -hmm. podcasts. And so many of them are constantly trolling no sleep, picking up the couple most popular stories of the day. So now there's this added layer for anyone who's been posting for a while and has been messaged by, usually the narrator messages, I'm sure both of you have gotten a million. It's like, hey, I liked your story. They don't say which story. Can I post it on my YouTube? They don't put a link to their YouTube. Thanks, bye. <laughs> and it's all terribly misspelled. Uh, but yeah. a few of them will actually be like, hey, what do you charge? What's your rate? So now there's this added, you know, your the competition of just going for karma, which karma is meaningless and those little orange up arrows don't count, but folks get very invested in it just knowing their stories are getting read. And then now there's this whole like, well, if it gets in the top three or top five, maybe we'll get noticed by a narrator large enough to pay. 
Maybe you'll yeah. pick up, you know, 50 bucks or 100. Maybe you'll start working with this narrator. So No Sleep has really evolves and I think keeps evolving into this strange and unique little hole in the internet. Yeah, I, yeah I for sure agree. But I also think that uh, what you were saying, Nathan, like how it changed from just total amateurs, just throwing stuff out there uh, to now people more being more serious with the craft of writing and trying to, you know, improve their writing like that's kind of where like i'm a broken record when it comes to crying about no sleep dude like but they ha they're having trouble like reconciling the two they want like it's clearly going the way of serious writers writing serious stories and posting them but the moderators and the subreddit itself it wants to stay that kind of like this is all real. Let's all pretend it's real kind of thing. But like, it's gotten so big that no one thinks they're reading a real story anymore. Like now they have like stories with like alternate dimensions and shit. And like, no one think like no one's thinking that's a real story. And I just, it would be so much better served. I think if it just became a place for horror fiction there where you didn't have to pretend like the story was real and you could uh, post third person stuff and, where your main characters can die if there's a good reason and like just stuff like that. But well, let me play devil's advocate real quick. Do you think then that it would lose some of its magic? I think that it already has through no fault of anyone, moderators, readers, or writers, because there's such a huge cultural difference between the internet in 2010 and the internet. Now people aren't stumbling upon creepypasta or no sleep and actually believing it's real you know like you said it's it, the cat's kind of out of the bag and you can't put it back in yeah. uh, if, if no sleep was just a horror subreddit i i don't know i don't think it'd be the same and i have a lot of the same issues with the rules and the constraints and now if i post something on no sleep it's usually very cookie cutter because i know there's kind of a checklist like these things will be popular this will probably get it to number one then i can sell it to x y or z narrator and it sort of sucks the fun out of it yeah. My biggest thing is I wish there was another place on the internet similar to No Sleep that was more open that had the same kind of audience because No Sleep is really, I, I've told you before, Nick, I'm used to, before Reddit, I was writing like a, a WordPress blog. And if I got like eight people who read it that month, I was through the freaking roof. And now you post on No Sleep any given day and the top story is usually one to 3,000 upvotes, you know, a couple hundred shares, a couple hundred comments. Uh, it's crazy. Yeah. For sure, for sure. Um, we have been talking a lot of just general sleep, but we have Dathan Auerbach here today and we should use him. Um, so I guess less about writing as a whole and more just about you. Have you always been into horror? Like what was your introduction to horror, be it movies, books, uh, TV, whatever? Uh, I think the first, um, I mean, the first like horror, like piece of media that made an impression on me was... Uh, probably probably like the friday the 13th series um something like pretty pretty like a mainstay in like the horror genre i saw that when i was a kid um and it like uh you know just just the the jason Voorhees, the behemoth like and i see one of your cats by the way it's made an appearance uh but that that so like that mainly mainly film uh so friday the 13th um child's play uh mm -hmm. was another big one for me um that i like kind of uh my grandma uh up in uh in maryland um had a uh she had like a big kind of colonial style house and i the room i would sleep in sometimes was like it was like a room like if you saw it in a movie you'd be like oh give me a fucking break like dude, nobody <laughs> nobody nobody has a room full of old creepy dolls like that's not real that's like a trope that you put in to like serve the plot but my grandma had that room and I had to sleep in that room and like, and it like, you know, it, it like freaked me out. Cause I had just seen child's play. And like, so that like, I was, I don't know, like seven or eight or something. And so that, like that feeling um, did something to me. Like it was, you know, cause nothing happened. Like I wasn't actually, you know, attacked by some like voodoo satanic doll or whatever. So it worked out and I liked the feeling of being afraid of, of, of fear. And so I just kind of like, you know, plunged ahead into, into weird horror. Uh, that same, like my, that grandma bought me, um, 
a copy a dvd copy of uh, dead alive when i was like 12 Classic. so like mm-hmm. and it said like i mean and it's like the one it's like the 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 original uh not the original cover but like it's it's a gory cover where like he's pull she, she's pulling her lips back i think and like a little skulls coming out of out of the out of the mouth and it says like the goriest film of all time or something so super uh, kid friendly then yeah. yeah like yeah just a, just a, a nice like family affair uh yeah. but she like yeah she's just like all right whatever like it's not, it's not my job to, i'm not your mom i'm your grandma so like <laughs> that's just awesome pass that on down your mom can figure it out so yeah i've been i've, I've liked horror for for as long as i can remember yeah that's a great movie and my second favorite lawnmower scene in a horror movie with the first of course being sinister uh, yeah truly yep and i'm up here in maryland as well so beautiful state shout out to to maryland I'm sure, Nick, yeah. you've got another big question lined up, but I did, while we're on the top, I just want to bring it up really quick. So, uh, Nathan, what is your favorite horror movie of all time? That, that was uh, my next big question. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a twofer. I mean, that's, that's a, you're going to get a combo there. Okay. That's, I mean, that's like an impossible question. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to say the thing. Um, Ooh, I think that one. that, I think that borders on being just a perfect movie. Um, just, not not just a horror film but i think it's i think it's almost if not actually a perfect movie the direction the music uh the whole cast like mm-hmm. all of the practical effects um i can watch you can watch that uh i think over and over again um i think my like most in like contemporary in the contemporary uh like horror um i think maybe maybe hereditary um mm-hmm. i really really love that movie a lot um I thought it was uh, that is one one of the best one of the best horror movies that I've seen in like fifteen years probably. Um, but I mean, I, I'd say the thing is my probably my all time. I've always wanted to because I love the thing as well. I think my favorite. <laughs> I go back and forth so often. Evil Dead Two right now is my current favorite. But there's there are, there are just yes. so many good ones. Um, Hereditary is fantastic. Tony Collette is just like. They need to start throwing Oscars at her. Just unbelievable <laughs> how she, like, I want to say she carried that movie. Everyone was good in that movie, yeah. but I would never want to be in the same, like, acting space as Tony Collette. No, you're fucked. Yeah, yeah. no, you're, you're done. It's, you're unbelievable. it's like Anthony Hopkins when he's in the mood to actually, like, perform for a film. Yeah. Yes. Can, can I interject here? <laughs> okay, gentlemen. Uh, Tony Collette is a national treasure. She deserved an Oscar for Hereditary 100%, but that may be the most overrated horror film I have ever seen. Oh. Interesting. Okay. Now, okay. now, from a technical standpoint, I think it's flawless. I think Ari Aster is one day going to make one of the films that I consider to be the best horror film ever. I think he will. Hmm. I think he has it in him. I think he has, like, a technical proficiency that, like, not many filmmakers have. But, like beyond that like it if it wouldn't have been a horror movie i think it would have been incredible i think it would have been a top 10 film of all time but Hmm. like i always get jumbled on this because i'm arguing with people on the internet and i'm just getting torn to pieces but like (laughs) it's like i don't even know how to put it like it seemed like it was, it was a great meditation on like grief and depression and loss and everything. And like, it did all that incredibly. It, it did that so well, but then it was like the first 80% of the movie did that all so just perfectly. And then it was like, it's a cult and they're mm-hmm. raising a demon and it just got all so formulaic at the end. And like the, I don't know. I don't know. I just, it didn't hit me the same way. I'm so glad that it was as successful as it was because anything that propels the horror genre forward, good. That's awesome. I'm glad it was successful, but like, I don't know. It just did not catch me like it did everyone else. And I'm sad about that. I can, I think the beginning, like you said, maybe like two thirds, even three quarters was by far the strongest part. The end, it was almost like they realized like, oh, this is like a horror movie. I guess we better put in some, some horror things. They still have some cool scenes. The scene with the uh, the fireplace in the book is one of my favorites. Uh, just yeah. the suddenness of it is just like, bam. Um, but I kind of get what you mean. And if I was going to 
like other kind of overrated horror movies, I didn't think Midsommar was as big as everyone is saying or as strong. I think Hereditary was much better, especially the the beginning parts. Um, but everyone was was wild for uh, Midsommar for a while, and I was just like, it, I didn't think it was scary. It was weird. It? it was trippy. It was like on it was a, a bad acid trip the entire time, but not scary. I disagree with everything that you guys. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I think, which is the beauty of conversation, because you know. But I I think. So like I look at uh, my, the the best horror to me serves as a kind of envelope for something else. So, which is distinct from I mean I love all kinds of horror. I like you know like uh, like slaughterhouse like slasher type stuff where mm-hmm. like the meat of the of the movie or the the property or whatever is just like the the the, the scares or the gore or whatever. But like thoughtful horror or like horror that 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 sits with you for a little longer for me uh, works best when it's an envelope to tell the kind of story that you were talking about, Nick, which is yeah, meditation on grief, which is the same thing uh, that that Midsummer was, uh, you know, meditation on grief and on like relationships and connections and, mm-hmm. and family and whatever. And I think that like telling that story like within like the envelope that that he constructed like to deliver it with this like this this and and specifically in hereditary with this family that has these um yeah these like hereditary like psychological disorders and kind of obfuscating the line between uh like the the supernatural versus the psychological and inviting the viewer to question like how much of this is actually happening versus how much of this is just in the characters minds because like you know because they have these psychological issues or disorders or whatever for me it worked like super great and i did not mind at all because you're right like in the last third of the movie it goes completely off the rails but for me like that kind of like slow build where like it seems to be like this this really uncomfortable like very few movies have felt as oppressive to me as hereditary felt from like the moment it started so it's got a kind of gloom and desolation that like pervades the film and like a different version of the film that ends with like shit just kind of not working out like that's still gonna be a very good movie but if you want to write an ending where shit really doesn't work out and a bunch of fucking like nasty ghoulish maniacs show up like i'm here for that because like that's not something that like i would expect out of a movie that felt like that in the beginning Uh, and it didn't feel out of step with the direction that the movie was going to me um so i i I loved it and i was here for it but that's but like so one movie that that i really like um that uh affected me more I, this it's it's a really divisive movie i don't know we'll talk about it if you've seen it um but the movie the mothman prophecies hell with, yeah uh, yeah okay so, so <laughs> that one that and, and it's divisive because i'll see and i'll talk to people and some people really fucking hate that movie uh and they think it's stupid and they don't they they they, they don't get it i saw that movie in high school i was like leaving another movie and i ran into a group of friends and they're like hey man we're going to see i didn't even know i hadn't heard about it um Mm -hmm. it's like pre-internet like there's no buzz or whatever and i hadn't seen a preview we're going to see this richard Gere movie called the mothman prophecies and so i went in completely blind i saw the movie like didn't shit myself like during the movie but then i'm like driving home and i live out like way out in the country and it's like a it's like a 25 minute drive through like nothing like no street lights and no, like nothing around and i could just feel the weight of the movie like pressing upon me with like every mile that i was driving and that shit stuck with me for years and like that's the kind of feeling that like for me is so rare in horror like just it's a subjective thing but like that's a movie that gave that to me and hereditary gave me a similar thing. I just felt gross after watching it. Um, but not in a way that like was a failure by the filmmaker. It was like a, a deep kind of grossness. Like you were supposed to feel, I think like pretty grimy after seeing that movie. Yeah. It might uh, have been... Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say a totally not important thing. I, uh, I got the Mothman prophecies as a father's day gift for my dad back in like 2003 it was like huh? two years after the movie came out. <laughs> I don't know why. Anyways, <laughs> go on with whatever surely gift. more in, more important thing you were going to say, Travis. Now I feel like I need to rewatch it. It, it. it came out when I was in high school as well, which must have been 
almost 20 years now, right? Something close to that. And I watched it then. I might have been like 14. And I remember not liking it, but definitely feeling uncomfortable. And now I'm, I, I want to go back and see what my change perspective. And one thing, too, is I just watch so many horror movies and I consume so much horror content that I become numb to a lot of it. So when something actually, I'm sure you're both probably the same way. When something yeah. is actually special, it's that much more rewarding. And that's one of the reasons, yeah. too, why I like deconstructions, horror parody, things like Cabin in the Woods, Tucker and Dale versus Evil are just sure. some of oh, my yeah. favorite things. Army of Darkness, you know, Evil Dead 3, uh, continuing with anything Raimi, um, especially early, is just fantastic. And I love when they hold that mirror up to it. I also think that, um, oh, who is it now? Uh, Jordan Peele is doing some of the most interesting horror work because, and like you said, that messaging or the horror coming in an envelope, uh, Get Out, Us, and then I recently saw Nope, all of them have these really interesting themes, but then they're also presented as visually striking and just good horror. And I don't know if either of you have seen Nope yet, but I really enjoyed it. Not everyone did, but to me it was a throwback to sort of like, almost 50s horror movies like Brain in a Jar and The Visitor from Planet X and that kind of stuff, but really updated with modern themes. So there's there's it's all these amazing horror creators right now, not just movies, but uh, horror books. There's the new uh, M. Night Shyamalan thing coming out, which is Knock at the Cabin, which is based on a Paul Tremblay book called The Cabin at the End of yeah. the World. And I just read that probably like two weeks before I heard about the movie. And then his other book, Head Full of Ghosts, uh, he's got a ton, and they're all amazing. But do you feel like right now, this is a question for both of you, we're living in a great era for horror? I think that it's sort of cyclical and has seasons. 70s into the 80s were great with Stephen King making all these big novels, and of course the mm -hmm. movie adaptations like The Shining. Um, I think the 90s were great with slasher films really rising, like, and then the deconstruction, Scream. So where do you think we are right now? Jason, take it. I think uh, so. I, I mean, I agree with that timeline. Uh, I think it's I, I think it's a genuinely good time for horror for a couple reasons. Um, the first being that I like it, this is like a, a purely like like economic and kind of like schemey reason that like horror movies make a fuck ton of money. Mm. Like they make the, the 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 amount of money that you need to spend. I I I've, I've never financed a film. I'm like I'm not in that world, but I know that the 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 amount of money that goes into making a horror movie versus the amount of money that you can get, like you're not guaranteed, obviously, but like horror movies have the chance, uh, like they stand to be some of the the the, the most um, profitable movies that can be made, and they're they're wildly popular with people. Uh, so I think that like that uh, in itself motivates studios to take on you know a whole like litany of different kinds of properties and take risks and do like weird shit um and so i think like the volume of horror movies that we're seeing uh is exciting and the kinds of the, and the kinds of movies that we're seeing is also pretty cool you have studios like they don't exclusively do horror but like a24 is doing like a ton of like off the wall oh, yeah. horrors, madness shit uh, and I'm here for it all. Like, I'm going to watch all of their weird, like, bizarre <laughs> movies uh, because, like, that's that's the only way that they make more is if, like, we, you know, go see them or rent them or whatever. Um, so I think for the amount of horror, we're, we're in good shape. And, like, the kind of horror, like, I don't know that we're really in, like, a phase of, like, yeah, you had, like, late 80s, early 90s, like, slasher films and then, like exploitation films from the 70s and mm -hmm. i don't know what the phase is that we're in now aside from like some transitional like weirdo phase um but i'm i'm enjoying it i'm loving it so yeah i'm, I'm feeling pretty good about it yeah that's pretty much i feel the exact same way like uh that's what i was going to comment on too is like it seems like there's been each decade give or take has had its own kind of it's left its own uh its own mark on on the horror genre like you said the 70s were the exploitation 80s were slasher 90s were like cheesy ghost story type <laughs> movies i think maybe and now yeah we're at like the kind like i almost look at what we have now like as you mentioned like a24 is probably the biggest you know uh they're making the most noteworthy uh 
horror movies out right now, I think. Um, they're like the equivalent of like literary horror, if that makes sense. Like uh, elevated. That's the, I think that's <laughs> yeah like elevated horror. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, it's just that kind of. I really like the anal- like I don't know if it's an analogy, but the envelope and like they're telling those kind of those horror stories with more substance than you know masked killer running around stabbing cheerleaders and shit Uh, which can be good and bad i mean i saw um i saw like sometimes i think it works against them slightly like i i and that's like a maybe a marketing problem um and the fact that like they're they're becoming really really well known for doing horror so then when they do something that's um like i saw the movie lamb um which is like a very strange and cool movie like is it horror like i don't really know um like it's there's some horrific things that happen and happen in it but i think that like expectations can um can can often become problematic when your studio known for doing certain types of things and so then the marketing material is like aligned with that conception and then it can leave people like unsure of how to react to certain movies or you're going in with the wrong expectations and then you don't like it uh so i just like when it comes to a24 shit i just try to like okay it's gonna be weird and like that's the the maximum like that i come that i expect i don't like oh i'm gonna this is gonna scare the shit out of me like i don't go in like that because maybe it's not actually horror maybe it's just like a, a weirdo story about a bunch of weirdos uh but I, I i like it all and it all at least has like a horror like bend to it which is you know, always a nice little like garnish for me for, for anything. One of my um, favorite examples, I think is, is like a perfect look at, at that, the issues of expectations that can be reinforced by bad marketing was it comes at night, which is another yes. 24 film, which I enjoyed a lot. But if you look Good at the movie. trailers, yep. you're like, Oh, it's a monster movie or, Oh, there's something yep. really, and it's not, it's, it's this slow burn of a psychological thriller uh, there's no one, you know, running around with the butcher knife. There's no one with the rubber mask on. But that, I think, was how it was ooh, marketed. My alarm's going off, but I'm still good. Uh, but they've done so many great... I just had to look up a list of their movies to try and see what was A24. So um, Green Room is one of my favorite movies ever. Uh, that that is, again, one. not horror, yeah. but is absolutely horrific. They, of course, did The Witch, which... It's just so good. It is so good. And, you know, Anna Taylor-Joy. Uh, Lighthouse was amazing. Like you said, Lamb, uh, which I haven't seen yet, but I've seen so many previews for I feel like I have to. And then The Green Knight, which it was hard. I remember watching it. I need to go back and rewatch it a couple of times because it's so hard to classify exactly what it is in terms of theme. And even like, is this a movie? Is this just a, <laughs> what is this? But it's cool to see that experimental stuff getting attention and a budget and an audience. And I want to try to then shift that back to to no sleep. So what was it like, Dathan, when your stories first started getting popular and started coming up in these, you know, best of lists? And are you used to having that sort of attention as a writer? Uh, Was this a new experience for you? And what has that been like? Uh, I was, it was really, it was really fucking weird to be honest. Uh, like it was, you know, like the, the, I mean, like I said, like I, I, I was, I posted it for kicks. Like I wanted it to just wanted to give back and like throw in and, you know, like add a story around the campfire or whatever. And so when, uh, he's gone dark. Yeah. Uh, so when, um, when it, uh, started gaining traction, like I, it was not something that, that, that I, was expecting or that like really even necessarily that like i was hoping for like you want to have like i presume i should just press on yeah yeah uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. uh like you want to have you know i mean i won't i do remember like kind of violently refreshing the page to see like to see if i was getting any of those sweet coveted orange upvotes <laughs> uh because that was that's the only metric like that's the only thing you have to go by if, if the story is being received well and so like I, uh, I, I, when I saw that it was like taking off, it was like really exciting for me. But then when I saw that, like people in the comments, like, you know, were like, well, go, that's, you know, that's so spooky. Like what happened next? Like when they started asking that, those types of questions, then it became kind of intimidating. Cause it's like, well, yeah, fuck, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> like, I hadn't gotten that far. Like this was like, 
I almost, I like wrote, I started writing the story. I started writing footsteps in the text block uh, for, for like on the, on the Reddit submission page. Uh, and then like, I like, I, I, I like copied and pasted it into a notepad after like 20 minutes. Cause I was like, well, this isn't like, you know, I'm, I'm, I can't, I don't want to accidentally submit it like before it's done. <laughs> so I moved it over to a notepad and was like, and started doing like started and finished it. And it, it the whole thing, you know, I don't know, it took me like a couple hours maybe. Um, and then I pasted it back into the, uh, into the notes, into the Reddit form. And then I like sat there for like, I don't know, 15 minutes or something like kind of looking at it and being like, should I, I don't know. You know, I, I'm not embarrassed now. No one's mm -hmm. seen it and no one can say shit to me. So why would I post this and like open myself up to, a, you know, a bunch of people to, to <laughs> clown on me when I could just sit here comfortably in my living room and not take any criticism because no one even knows that I've written this fucking thing. <laughs> so like I put, when I went to, and then when I went to post it, the page had timed out, like it like refreshed and like deleted the entire story, oh, which made me like really glad that I had, actually written it in notepad oh god um, yeah because yeah, yeah. i would have just i would have just lost it and then i would have been like well okay fine, i'm not rewriting that mm. uh so yeah when, when when i did that like i was very interested uh in in how people were i wanted them to like it i wanted you know i wanted people to dig it uh but then when they started asking like what happened next like that that became like it was exciting and uh and intimidating and, and kind of like kind of a little overwhelming because like I, I wasn't I didn't have an answer to that question and I had to I had to I had to decide if I wanted to figure it out and then when I made that decision I had to actually figure it out which was not something I was really prepared to do. Yeah, the um, you actually just answered what I was going to ask next. Uh, if because whenever I would do a series on no sleep, it would be. I'd post the first one and I'd have like kind of a loose idea of where I wanted to go after that. But then they'd be like, oh, this is what I think is going to happen. And I'm like, that's so much better than what I was going to do. <laughs> so that's what it, that is. You were right. That's what they, you, you nailed it. So, but if you, you didn't yeah. know, apparently. Um, so you wrote footsteps in about 15 minutes. What was it like uh, switching that over to writing pen pal, the novel? Like, what was okay. that process like? I wrote footsteps in like a couple hours. I'm not a savant. I don't want to say I wrote it in, in 15 minutes. Uh, oh, didn't I say hours? That's what I meant to say. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you said 15 minutes. Was, and like, that's cool. Oh, I, shit. No, I, I don't know why I said that. You're all good. That. I was stunned for a second. Like 15 minutes. <laughs> Just no, no edits, no mistakes ever. I don't know why I said perfect, that. Sorry. Perfect round. Well, yeah. No, I just, I just, I don't, I, I don't, I don't want it to somehow then be, uh, people are under the impression that, that I took. <laughs> I wrote it in six minutes. I'm a, I'm a literary, I'm a literary whiz kid. Um, yeah. So the uh, all the stories took about the same amount of time to uh, to write. So I would spend a couple hours on on each of them. Um, I'd have an idea, and then I'd like think about it for a couple of days. And I was posting about one a week um, because, like, the like at the time there wasn't. Um, there were no tags on, on, I don't know if there were tags on Reddit at all, but there were, there was no way to indicate series on, on Reddit. And there were like, if there were other, um, it's like serialized posts, then, uh, there weren't many, I think like my time there overlapped with, uh, people like bloodstains who did the correspondence, correspondence series. Yeah. Uh, so like, but he, but I'm not, I, I can't remember like timeline wise. So if you wanted to do a series, you either had to know it was a series and say it was in the title, or you would just link your stuff. Like you daisy chain them and like link the next post and go back and edit and, you know, add a link to the next one or whatever. Um, so I'd spend a couple hours uh, writing uh, the stories and I try to get them out like with, with no more than a week between so that I could try to maintain some semblance of momentum and so that people wouldn't forget like because even even then i wasn't sure like there was no way to tell and no real way to know like how regular people were there so like when when i wrote the next one uh i i didn't know if anyone who had seen footsteps would even still be like cruising that that page so like you know it was it was a gamble and not like a huge one but it was like yeah i don't i don't know if i i need to try as best i can to make sure that anyone who wanted to know is going to be able to see this. So I need to be timely about it. So 
that like you know if, uh i don't know the the whole the whole thing each story only took like a couple hours to write and then like the transition into the book was like a much longer uh process to actually like you know construct something like that and to edit it down and to you know to, like have it formatted and like that was that was a whole other project that like was a lot more complicated than just you know like yeah copying out of my notepad onto onto the reddit the reddit thing so but that w that was also fun uh and that was also something that was like i go i go in with everything with like extremely low expectations uh and so i was just like i i i want a physical book for me and so i'm gonna but i don't want to pay for it like you know that's 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 too expensive to like make one and like so i'm gonna just try to get the like least like the the, the minimum amount of money i can to pay for this stuff and like hopefully I sell it to like, you know, 50 people or whatever, and, uh, it'll cover its own cost. And then I can, you know, then I can have my physical book and so can the handful of other people, but yeah, the, the, the construct, the, the, the assembly and like the, the construction of the book took a, took a long time. Um, you self, you self published pen pal, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, uh, I think, uh, there was new because like you said it wasn't just a copy and paste from no sleep to the book but like like memories was a new chapter right yeah or like the intro was that the only new thing yeah so uh that that was like that that involved like a lot of like back and forth with myself on like how to even approach that so like the the, the only brand new like full chunk of, of text like full chapter was memories uh everything else was really faithful to uh what i had already posted online and before i had done that like before i was even done with the series like people were saying in the comments that like you know they were talking about a book and people i, I had a couple comments that were like you should you should wait like you should like write all this stuff and then finish it in the book like give the last chapter in the book um, which I wasn't comfortable with. I didn't, I didn't, I, I decided I didn't want to do that. Um, and so I, I knew I was going to finish it on, on Reddit. And then, then I had to make a decision of like, how much new stuff do I want to include in the, um, in the book? And aside from like, you know, minor kind of flourishes and unpacking things that like maybe were a little too vague or I had treated like with too much brevity in, in the, in the text, um, but the uh, the the decision on like whether to add uh, another chapter, say like an extra chapter, like somewhere you know before the end, that was something that I grappled with for a long time. But like I made the decision that like I didn't want people to feel like they needed to buy the book to get like the full story. Like I had built up like what was uh, to great surprise to me i'd built up like a, a fan base and i didn't want them to feel like well now now you got to give me money if you want like the rest <laughs> the rest of the story mm -hmm. so everything that i added to the book i just wanted to be like i wanted it to be a little tighter i wanted it to like be uh fix some of the grammatical stuff and and make it a little cleaner um and like pretty it up and and have it in a nice package but i didn't i didn't want i didn't want them to think that like I was withholding or that like there was some secret like you know next you know next new chapter or something that you had to like that there was a paywall uh between the reader and the book yeah. so uh, i guess at this point horror writers are basically the original uh battle pass for gaming um with microtransactions <laughs> like sure. chapter one and now that you're yeah hooked you can either get part of chapter two for free or you can get the next four unlocks for you know a small payment yeah and then and that's not like and there have been people who have done that and like and and there's you know people are have mixed opinions about it and like it, it, obviously that that's down to the to the writer and that's down to like what what the readers are willing to do if you go into it like at the time like nothing like that existed like there like no one had done that and i, I didn't want to be the first guy to do that to like put you know to add the paywall or yeah like introduce the battle pass and so like <laughs> you know, if there's, if there's an understanding, if there's a mechanism already in place, or like, it's, it's something that like, you know, that, that like, they understand the possibility or even the inevitability of something like that, then maybe it's a little more fair, but it didn't seem fair to me at the time. And I thought that like, 
I would, uh, I'd lose, you know, everything to me felt not for any reason other than like, you know, my own understanding of the world, everything felt like extremely tenuous and that like the, you know, just like a, like a, like a a sculpture of dust in my hand. And if I did anything wrong, then like everything was just going to blow away. And so like, I didn't want to like, I didn't want to fuck with it and, and, and jeopardize, like I had a good thing. People were interested. I, you know, we had like a, a, you know, we all moving forward in good, in, in good faith. So I just wanted to keep it like that. Um, so I didn't add anything new. Yeah. That was actually going to be another question of mine. Was there anything, uh, that, I mean, apparently not for the, uh, the novel version, but with no sleep, were there any chapters that like ended up on the, the cutting room floor, any ideas you were going to pursue, but decided against, uh, a different ending, anything like that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. To all that, I think. So like when I was, yeah. So, uh, the ending, the ending, uh, to, to pen pal, uh, took me a minute. I like, I, I grappled with like a couple different endings and one of the endings that, um, I didn't wind up using, um, left, it would, it would have left some, uh, some possibility or like, uh, potential that that like the story wasn't fully resolved like that the that the the stalker was still alive um i think that i didn't have him originally in uh like in the state that he was in at the end of the story um i think he was like missing and there was some implication that he was like still around and that like and then i toyed with like um uh, incorporating that into like subsequent reddit posts because this was again at a time when like it was all presumed to be real to the point that like, even when I was posting and you can go back and look, I think I haven't done it in a while. Cause like, it's weird to read your own fucking comments from like, <laughs> years ago. We but, all like, do it. <laughs> yeah. So like the, 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 but I think like my, my state of mind and the way that I was presenting myself in like responses to comments on my story was like pretty, it was like pretty uh, like suppressed and pretty, um, uh, like uh, restrained like someone would say that they liked the story and i just say thanks like you know I, I couldn't be like effusive and like oh thanks so much man i worked so hard on this one because i was having to pretend that it was real like yeah. and if this shit's real then i'm bummed out about having to talk about it and i can't be like doing backflips with people about like its reception so like i contemplated like continuing in that vein and like you know uh kind of catching the story up to the modern day a little bit um because most of it takes place as a flashback or like you know how to sequence <laughs> memories um but then i decided that I, I didn't want to do that and that would probably be shitty and I, I didn't like that idea uh and then i had another idea um the the so i was gonna uh, write a chapter uh for the book that i that i scrapped i never i never started on it but it was going to be something like uh, in, in the book version of pen pal, uh, it's going to be something like the, uh, narrator, uh, winds up in the hospital for some reason. Um, and the, uh, the stalker like finds him and like, because nothing is ever super direct in pen pal, like there's never really a, a, a confrontation, but like there was going to be some, something with like the, the, the stalker, like, uh, uh, stealing, uh, bags of the the narrator's blood that had been taken for like a partial transfusion or something and like uh doing something with that like injecting it into his own veins or some weird like psychotic shit um and i was like hey i don't really want to do that that seems like too much that's uh that's that's not that's not the way i want this to go so i didn't i didn't add that yeah um did you I know I looked, but this is obviously years ago, but did you ever write anything else for No Sleep? No. No? Man, just a one and done. No, and that was, and again, man, like, that was, uh, that's, like, for a variety of reasons, but, like, one, I'm slow. Like, I'm slow as fuck. Um, But then, two, uh, like, the, 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 the the conceit and like yeah the kayfabe of like this is all this is all real and we're like you know we're all pretending and whatever um to me it was like i like i i i thought about it um i'm gonna i'm gonna acknowledge that no it is just because I'm, I'm i'm incredibly slow that's the primary reason secondary reason though 
and 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 what what informed part of my lack of motivation is like well any i felt like especially then anything that like i do now like can't might might undercut like the potency uh and the believability and like the sustainability of pen pal that like because this again is this is in like 2011 like this is and the like you know at the, when i was posting a no sleep i think there was like 50,000 subscribers or something like it was tiny um and so like i i thought that like and people were still like riding the you know they're still wondering if it's true and i'm like oh if i come in with like some other thing now that also happened to me in addition to this like lifelong saga of pen pal man this guy's gonna, life sucks i'm luckiest yeah, like, kid on the planet yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> you can't catch a break but yet he still he keeps catching breaks because he's alive <laughs> so it was just like both of those things to me like they they, they were they were both working against like my inclination to like develop something new for no sleep and i felt like leaving it at pen pal um i didn't know what i was going to do uh fully with bad man when i started writing it but like leaving leaving my like uh legacy in the sense of like you know what people associate me with leaving it at pen pal like at the time felt right so that i wouldn't like kind of step on it and kind of trespass against trespass against it in a weird way and it still feels okay to me um i'm still on reddit i mean i still like read tons of stuff and I just don't, I've never been like super interactive. Uh, you saw how long it took to get me on this, on this call. Like, you know, this, and that, that was, that was with some like dogged determination, you know, by you dudes, like, you know, getting me to respond to a comment. Like, it's just not, it's just not how I am uh, typically. So we do appreciate you that. being on and Nick, I know you can keep going. I got to hop off in a few, but before I go, I did want to, well, first, make a comment in that I think that you miss a golden opportunity to have your character from Pen Pal just stack all these miseries on top of each other back when everyone thought it was true. So it's like, I took a break when the stalker was leaving me alone, and I got abducted by aliens. And then I bought a haunted house. Like, you could have just kept going. I should have. You're right. And I'll never forgive myself. <laughs> but that's fine. That's in the past. And my, my final question is about the future. What are you working on now? What do you have planned? What's going on? in your your writing world uh yeah so i am working on uh i was working on one thing uh and it was going okay and then i hit a kind of wall that like uh i couldn't really get past like it was just it was like a structural wall um that like uh, that made it that made it so i needed to just kind of set that story to the side so i uh i've been working on that was a little while ago uh so i've been working on on something new that i think is going to be in like the same kind of vein as 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 pen pal and as bad man um just you know bad shit happening to people who don't necessarily deserve it uh and you know maybe things work out but probably not um so yeah i'm working on working on a, same, a similar kind of like just in, in just tonally um and, and 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 kind of in subject matter still like very like grounded in in humanity and and like the the things that people can do to one another um so yeah i'm still i'm still chipping away i'm just uh i'm remarkably slow it's really pretty impressive i wish people would, <laughs> would would comment more on that like man it's really cool how like slow you are and how it takes you forever to do stuff because i think it's super neat but that's that's uh that's just one of my that's just one of my techniques you could yeah. work that into a story though i've been like you've all probably been wondering why i've been gone for so long it's like ah i was trapped like i was locked up okay. somewhere <laughs> Yeah, I was in I was in some cellar and yeah. like that's yeah, all right. And then I could like yeah, I could I read a story like that on No Sleep. It was I I I can't get over like the just the 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 things that people try to like work into very very limited parameters on that. It's that the eleven art. year later epilogue to Pen Pal. Yeah, yeah, I just got it. I fell in my own grave, and I, I recently unearthed myself, and yeah. I've still got dirt on my fingers. But like, peep this shit. We'll see what happened to me next. It's beautiful. All right, gentlemen, I got to head out. Yeah, uh, uh, other that's... other adult responsibilities, unfortunately. But it has been a genuine pleasure. Hey, thanks for being here man yeah absolutely and i'm looking forward to whatever you put out uh, at whatever pace so you know in 60 or 70 years or whenever it lands i will be the first one to grab it well I, by then with it just beam that shit into your brain you won't even have to like 
you won't even have to pick it up. It'll just download from the satellite. And then you just, you'll, yeah, you'll you it blink to wish list it, and then it just shows up in your head. Like, <laughs> well, that's pretty it. good. That's great. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, Travis. Take it easy, man. Later on, man. Uh, so I, I really only had one other thing I wanted to ask you about was uh, just bad man. But I mean, you actually kind of commented on it. Do, so do you, do you just like working in that kind of abducted child? <laughs> do you like abducted children? And- <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like it's, it's, uh, I think like what happens with me is like, I'll, I'll, I'll write something that, so like tonally, I, I do like a particular kind of tone subject matter wise. Like I'm a little, I, I, my interests, my interests in terms of consumption are like super broad. Like I like, I, I, I like reading and watching supernatural horror and like slasher stuff. Like, I don't, I don't think I would enjoy writing that as much, but I like, I like reading it. So my interests in terms of writing kind of like constrain, um, like the routes that I'm inclined to take. But one thing that I've noticed about, about writing and like, maybe, maybe you, you would find this too, like in, in, in your own pursuits, like I'll kind of like hit upon something in one story. So like I hit upon some, some like themes and some ideas and pen pal, um, as I was writing it as the stories. And then especially as I was like putting it together as, as a book and like, I'll realize that like, that I want to, I have a lot more to say about that. I have the, like this theme, this idea, whatever it is, like whatever kind of like mechanism I've built in, like now this has my attention and like, I'm not done with it. And so like that, that informed, that like hugely informed a lot of what I did in bad man. So like in, in, in pen pal, uh, at like the very end of the story, the narrator, like, wonders if he had let his balloon go like a second or two later or sooner, like how much different things would have been. Mm-hmm. And that idea of like the, the, the kind of like, you know, causal cascading of life, like how, you know, things lead into one another and like, you know, the, 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 the chain of, of effects that you can like trace that, that became like, really interesting to me and like that kind of arrested my attention uh when i was writing bad man and like i and it informed my approach on bad man uh, more than i thought it would but it was because i wasn't done with that idea and so the same thing has happened when i was writing bad man certain ideas and like themes kind of grabbed me and like you know so like the stories like writing and finishing one story kind of informs like part of the approach I want to take on the second one. So I think like it, it, it is, you know, one day I'll probably get away from like imperiled children. Um, but like, I don't know. I think like it, 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 it's interesting to me. It's interesting to people who, 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 uh, who read it, I think. Um, and I can, I can, I can do a lot with that. So for, for now, like it, it, it's, it's working for me and it's interesting to me. So I, 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 I'll keep going with that for as long as, for as long as those things are true, I guess. For sure. And like, I mean, you've mined some two great books from that concept. So yeah, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, uh, I love bad man. Did you work in a grocery store? Yeah. Okay. I kind of figured. Yeah. I for for, was, yeah, for like a couple, for a couple years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That was, uh, I, I mean, I've read bad man twice and I, I don't even know how many times I've read pen pal. It's all dog eared and shit. Um, thank you i'm glad you liked it thank you oh dude I, and I, I wasn't kidding before like uh it really did have like a profound influence on me as a writer and like there when i was doing 100 percent true which there's a bunch of episodes on youtube um i put out the occasional like who would you guys want to hear from you were always the number one person that That's people cool. wanted to hear from and uh you were always my answer to that too. So I really do appreciate you uh, talking with us today, man. Yeah, of course, man. It's been an honor. I I appreciate it. The honor is mine. I appreciate you, you, you having me on. I think what you're doing is super fucking cool. Uh, And I apologize for my apparent elusiveness. Uh, But it's it's just like, (laughs) you were, if you didn't know about it, you can't be blamed for it, man. It's no worries. Yeah, Yeah, no, that, that, yeah, that's fair enough. Uh, but no, I think like, that, I mean, that, that's like hugely flattering. That means, I mean, like that, that means like the world to me to like hear something like that. Cause like, you know, I, 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 like, I'm just an idiot. I'm just some guy. 
Like, you know, I, I've written some stuff. I consume a lot of stuff like, you know, but I'm just like, I'm just some dude who like wanted to write a story. And I think that that's how, like, you know, that's like most, most people, any, any creative type of, in like a, a, in a literary persuasion or like, you know, filmmaking or whatever, like, you know, I, I I'm, I'm, that was my, the, the impetus for like everything I've done was like in hopes that I would like capture the interest of like a handful of people for like a little bit because that's what yeah. got me into no sleep and that's what like got me into you know literature when I was a kid like reading books and being transported and if I could do something like that then that would be meaningful to me so to know that like I've had you know any kind of like you know influence or impact on on like actual like substantive decisions that people have made like one feels like too much responsibility for me like that that i can't i can't possibly be responsible for the decision that people <laughs> make in the trajectory of their own life but that's like that's hugely flattering and that's that's not something that i ever expected or uh you know w w was was even like conscious of the possibility of uh when i was starting i was just trying to just you know just trying to give back a little and, and tell what i hope would be a would be a cool story so if I've had an effect on you in that way, like that's, that, that's huge for me, man. Like that's, that's way more than I ever fucking expected. For sure. Uh, and whenever Daughter's Drawings does get published, whether I find an actual publisher, or just put it out myself. I'm definitely going to send you a copy because Please it's do. definitely in part dedicated to you, man. No, that, um, that I mean, well, now no, no, I got to read it. So yeah, that, <laughs> get, 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 I'll send you my address. Uh, you can send it to me. And, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd love to see it. Cause that like, there, you know, and there's like, there's something like, you know, there's something like intoxicating about like finishing a story or like, even, even, even if you're not finished with it, like seeing, you know, seeing it, it, its shape and its structure and the texture of it and like knowing like where it's going to go and like, and that's, that's like a, that's a huge triumph. Uh, and that like, yeah, I, I, I'd love to read it. I, uh, which is like, and I don't know, like, do you, do you show your friends the stuff you write? Never. Okay. I mean, that would also, that's also it would imply that I actually have friends. That's okay. That's an assumption I'm making. That, that's my mistake. <laughs> I'll thank you not to assume that about. Okay. Me. Then I apologize. It will not happen <laughs> but, again. But no, I, I don't really let anybody read anything before, before it gets put out there. Okay. Yeah. That's, so. I like, I, I didn't, uh, I, uh, for the longest time, like I, 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 I said still like, I, I'm super hesitant to like, to, to bring it up with people or to like, you know, because if for me, one, I mean, yeah, I don't want to get dunked on by my friends <laughs> Two, like, I don't want to put them in a position like where they feel like they can't dunk on me. And then yeah. three, like, it, it seems like if I, you know, it's one thing if like you're in a band and you're like, Oh, I wrote this, I, you know, or we recorded this song, like check out this three minute song. It's another thing to be like, Hey, yo, I wrote this 300 page novel. Like <laughs> you want to, you want to peep this real quick? Like that's like, 89,000 words. Yeah, <laughs> right. Let me know what you think. But like, no, it's so like that, like, and that, that, you know, that's tough. So like to, to, to power through that and to like write for, you know, for, for strangers on the internet or for like, you know, uh, without any kind of idea of uh, who will ever possibly see, you know, what you're writing is, is tough. And like that, you know, that, that, that's, that's a difficult thing to get over. But the fact that like, uh, you know, you're plowing through, I think is huge. And the fact that like, I was any part of the beginning of that, like, you know, that journey is, is, you know, that's like fucking, that's colossal to me. So I, yeah, I appreciate well, it. For sure, man. You absolutely were. Uh, thank you again. And uh, I hope we'll be able to have you back on here sometime. And just, I mean, now that we've gotten the Dath and Auerbach of it all out of our systems, uh, we just, we just love just chatting about just shooting the shit. Oh yeah. So it'd be fun to have you back again uh, sometime down the road, man. Yeah. Just holler at me. I mean, don't like, don't wait until like I publish something else because then I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna be some like brain in a jar. Like I'll be so fucking old that like I won't, you know, I have to communicate with like thought waves and stuff. So like, no, yeah. The, How up, hardcore would that be? You don't <laughs> want me to do that? I mean, it would be. I'm just worried the tech won't be there. Or they won't have like my voice synthesizer right, and I'll think it sounds stupid, but I can't change it. Like, you know, I don't. I don't want to risk it. So no, just holler at me, and we'll. Uh, yeah, we'll. For sure, out. man. Hell yeah, we'll have you back soon. Awesome, dude. Have a good one, man. I appreciate it, man. You too. Thanks.